Uh, hey everybody, I am Max with Terminal Lance and uh, I wanted to do something a little bit different this week uh, and show you a behind the scenes look at creating this week's comic. Um, I've changed up the way I kind of do the comic strip lately, so I thought it'd be fun to, uh, to break it down for you guys and uh, show you how I go about making it. All right, here we go. Um, so uh, just to start everything off, uh, whenever I post these videos of me drawing and painting or whatever, uh, everybody always wants to know what programs, what gear I'm using, etc. Um, so this is all done in Photoshop, uh, good old good old Photoshop, uh, with a Wacom Cintiq tablet. So it's like the the big drawing monitor. Um, I have the 24 inch uh, one here on my my desk. Um, I do also very often do the comic strip in uh, Procreate on iPad, um, but this particular one I did in Photoshop uh, just so that I could record it and, uh, you know, put this video together. So inking Terminal Lance uh, has definitely evolved over the years. Um, it used to be very loose and very kind of gestural uh, in a way that, like, really has not aged very well. Uh, I really hate looking at the old Terminal Lance comics. Like, there's just something about it. It's just like, uh, there, there's like a look to them that bugs me a lot as an artist. Uh, as the strip has evolved, and this is, you know, a cartoon, um, I've definitely gone for more of an animation art style with Terminal Lance. Um, and part of that, uh, the sort of overarching art theory behind the way I approach inking Terminal Lance is that... Uh, it's done with complete drawings, as I like to, to put it. Um, and that is that like the, you know, the outlines around like his face and, and like Garcia's ears and neck and everything, like they're all very solid line, complete lines. There's no sketchiness to them. Um, it's very deliberate and very uh, uh, kind of methodical in a way. Um, really uh, designed to like flow uh, well, you can see I repositioned Abe's uh, gaze there because uh, he was looking off to the side and for this joke of them wondering where the bathroom stall doors are, uh, his his eyes should be facing the, uh, the stall doors because I feel like that would make more sense. Um, and that's just an example of like making some decisions on the fly where it's like, uh, you know, you notice something in the drawing that you want to change and so you just you just make a change. Uh, drawing Garcia here sitting on the toilet. <laughs> uh, not the first time I've drawn somebody sitting on a toilet, but it is always like a really awkward position to draw, um, you know, without any reference photo of somebody on a toilet. Um, <laughs> if you if you think back to uh, the White Donkey, there's that great scene of Abe sitting uh, in the in the Portage uh, after he chews the gum and and has a, a very upset bubble gut stomach. Uh, so not the first time I've drawn somebody on a toilet, um, but it is definitely an awkward position, just like the way the legs are shaped and the, you know, resting the hands in front of the genitals so that, uh, you know, we're not revealing anything too, uh, <laughs> too lewd here. Um, then maybe, you know, I can have like a different version of this for my OnlyFans. Uh, <laughs> uh, again, drawing another uh drawing of abe this time sitting on the toilet again super awkward position to have to draw uh you got the pants around the ankles arms kind of crossed over um so you know we don't we don't see too much one thing i was going to add in this that i forgot was uh the the leg hairs i didn't get around to it i usually like to have that in there it's just sort of like you know people got people got hairy legs it just makes it funnier i don't know why uh here we go drawing the stalls uh in, in the camp wilson bathroom that uh was very controversial when i put this up uh this morning uh the marines were like we didn't have stalls when we went to camp wilson we, we stared in each other's eyes romantically when we went number two. And I was like, oh, Jesus. Um, <laughs> uh, when I, I drew this toilet here, I, when I was drawing it, I realized I didn't really know what an industrial toilet looked like. And so I needed to like 
pull up an image. So you see, I just like grab this random picture off Google. Uh, Got to get an authentic toilet here. You know, this is like the kind of crappy, you know, the, like public restroom, government facility kind of toilet you would see. It goes with the decor of Camp Wilson. Got to have authentic toilets. Uh, just finishing up the background here on the bottom panel, adding some little details. Um, I'm not like a crazy, super detail-oriented artist. Uh, I tend to want to um, just kind of draw as much as I need to, um, which I think fits into the kind of cartoony art style that I'm going for with Terminal Lands. Uh, you know, it's like you're just drawing like solid drawings. Um, you don't need a lot. You just need enough to sell it and to uh, to fit in with the overarching uh, look and feel of, of the artwork. And here we go, starting to add the color. Um, the way that I approach color, and color is a new, whole new world for Terminal Ants within the last you know few months. Um, color, generally, the way I like to approach it in this cartoon style is to set like a background tone that's going to kind of inform the rest of the colors that I use. So everything gets sort of shifted a little bit based on what you pick for the background. Um, and then I like to add a kind of gradient at the top of the panel that just sort of comes in uh, downward or upward, depending on which direction your light's coming in. And that way it just adds like a little bit of depth and atmosphere to the, the look of the background. Uh, coloring the camouflage here on a separate layer which I'll explain in a minute. Uh, coloring Garcia here, obviously he's um, Hispanic, uh, Mexican, Latino. Uh, so he's got uh, a darker skin tone. And when you're approaching uh, coloring people of color, um, I think it's really important to, to add, uh, to try to get like a rich skin tone. You know, you can't just like throw the slider down and get like a darker color like it's really important to try to get that like rich colorful tone to it um, i actually just shifted the background color a little bit but um, it wasn't enough to make a huge difference i just that i noticed the, the reference picture that i had was a little bit more yellow one thing i really like to do when i'm coloring uh, that helps me out a lot saves me a lot of time is pick only a few colors really uh to um to, to pick from throughout the entire piece. And that way you can just use the color picker to kind of go between colors and add them where you need them. Um, so there's really only like, I don't know, I'd say probably like 10 colors on this entire thing. And you notice the, uh, the toilets. Um, so I'm coloring Garcia's eyes here are pure white. The toilets are actually not white. Uh, I like to make the eyes the only thing on the page that's actually pure white. Um, so the toilets are actually kind of like an off-white it's, it's subtle, you don't, probably don't notice it, um, but it just sort of gives the eyes a little bit of extra pop because they're the only thing on the page that's actually pure white. Including these sheets of paper are not actually white. They're just a little bit off white. Uh, wasted time on that brick wall. Um, the reference photo that I had from some random Marine at Camp Wilson, <laughs> he sent it to me yesterday. I uh, realized the wall was not actually brick, so I needed to redraw it when I saw it. So I'm um, coloring the camouflage here on a separate layer. And the reason that I do that, um, the reason I, I waited last to do that and do it on a separate layer is because the way I apply the camouflage pattern. Um, so I do that pretty simply by just uh, placing the camouflage pattern, and you'll see me do it here in just a second. Um, place it on top of the camouflage color layer and then just apply a clipping mask. So it just masks out that pattern, um, which is a lot smarter of a thing to do than try to individually paint uh, <laughs> camouflage on every character that's in the comic because that would just take me all day and, and I'm way too lazy for that. Um, this is something I started doing with Battleborn and I just, you know, I, I found the look of it looks really good and uh, uh, just something I continue to do uh, in Terminal Lands. 
So for the shadows, the way I do the shadows is a little bit complicated. Um, so basically, when I color and draw this thing, everything's on a separate layer. So the ink work is on a separate layer, the colors on a separate layer, the camouflage is on a separate layer. So for the shadows, what I like to do is um, group those layers, sort of like a like a single animation cell, I guess you could think of it, and um, duplicate that group, and then merge that group, and then bring the color slider or bring the tone all the way down to either black or white or all the way up to white, and then you can use that as like an alpha mask uh, to, to either tone in your shadows or carve out your shadows um, without having to affect the background. If that makes sense. If you're following me, that it'll make sense, but <laughs> if you're not super familiar with Photoshop, I just said a whole lot of gibberish, but um, it's just how I like to approach it. It just sort of keeps everything clean in this like animation art style. Um, certainly not the way everybody needs to do it, but for Terminal Ants, this is how I approach it. Got to get those little details, little little rim lights, little highlights in there. Got to get that toilet rim light. Really important stuff. This, it's all about the little things, you know. Uh, so here I'm actually toning the ink. And what I mean by that is like um, I'm coloring all the, the black ink that was on the page is no longer black. There is no solid black on the page at all. Um, and that's because uh, I find that when you add just a tiny, tiny bit of color to the ink, um, so it's now like a really, really dark blue, um, it just gives everything like a little bit more atmosphere to the drawing. Uh, it makes the, the ink kind of blend in with the rest of the work a little bit. And then same thing here, like I'm adding these sort of like effects and stuff, um, and it's really just trying to add a little bit of like atmosphere and ambiance to the drawing just to give it that extra glow and that extra bit of like colorful, uh, uh, atmosphere to it. And then here, you know, just doing the lettering as you would any comic strip. It's not that complicated, but, uh, you know, just typing it all directly into Photoshop and then uh, drawing in my speech bubbles. Uh, and this is pretty much done. You, uh, you know, just add the little tails. I think I resized the uh, lettering here a little bit. And then um, that's pretty much a completed uh, Terminal Lance comic. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, there's, there's been a lot of shifts and changes with the way that I do Terminal Ants. It's definitely much more colorful, uh, than it used to be being colored at all. Um, and, uh, I have a lot of fun with it now. You know, I, I really try to, to indulge in the artwork bit of it. Uh, this whole thing probably took maybe, uh, maybe like two hours, hour and a half, two hours. Um, so not that long in the grand scheme of things, but you get a really nice drawing out of it. And that's all I got. Uh, that's the finished Terminal Lance comic. Uh, so thank you all for, uh, for listening to me and uh, stay tuned for more.